Well, Dr. Ween, one of the areas of great confusion is who should be screened and when should screening start. So for the general risk man, what do the guidelines tell us about screening? Good question. It depends which set of guidelines. There are probably eight sets of guidelines for various organizations wow. ranging from do not screen anyone, U.S. preventative health services, to mid-ground, uh, screen people from age 54 to 69 as long as you inform them what the screening is for and what's going to happen to the result to probably the more liberal European Association of Urology. Basically, it leaves more latitude to the individual practitioner as to who to screen. In our practice, generally, you know, we recommend screening for people who we think we can help if diagnosed with positive and who need active treatment. So that eliminates anyone with a less than 10 to 12 year lifespan. I personally think that anyone over the age of 45 can potentially benefit with screening. High risk groups begin screening at age 40. That would be African Americans, okay. people with a first degree relative or two first degree relatives. Those I think should begin at age 40. What's involved in screening? We hear about PSA, which can be con uh, quite confusing. Is PSA all there is to screening? Is there more than that? Screening generally consists of PSA determination, blood test, and a digital rectal exam. Okay. You put those two together and decide whether there is reason to go ahead with the next step, which would generally be a biopsy or at least repeating the PSA at some interval. PSA is an enzyme that's made by the prostate tissue, and benign prostate tissue makes a lot. Most of it goes out in the ejaculate. Some backflows into the circulation, gives you a low but measurable level. Cancer tissue also makes PSA, actually less PSA than normal tissue, but more backflows into the circulation. I see. So same unit tissue, cancer, less PSA made, higher serum level. So that's why PSA isn't truly specific for prostate cancer. Not at all. So given that bit of ambiguity, that it may be a malignancy, or it may be a benign condition, or it may even be normal uh, prostate cells that are contributing to the PSA, how do you determine what evaluation steps, if any, are needed? There are certain normal ranges of PSAs for various age groups. Okay. So you look at those, you can look at the PSA change over time if someone's had PSA in nice. the past, which is one of the values of beginning screening early, is you have that marker from the past to look at. And then you talk to the patient about what their desire is. I, I ask them, if you had prostate cancer, would you want to know about it? And if you had it and knew about it, would you want to talk to someone, myself, a radiotherapist, and choose some form of management, right. which may in fact be just watching it, active surveillance? So one of the challenges about a nonspecific screening tool, of course, is that people are worried it leads to too many invasive biopsies and other high-risk evaluation studies. Is that the case when it comes to elevated PSAs? It can be. I think there are many PSAs that by the numbers are elevated that you will choose not to biopsy the patient who owns that right. uh, because of a variety of reasons. There are lots of things that can elevate the PSA. Infection, inflammation, prostate size, bigger the prostate generally, bigger the PSA. There's a quotient called the PSA density, PSA number over the size in CCs. Mm -hmm. Basically, it shouldn't be over 0.15. Um, you can look at all those and decide in an individual patient what the risk of their having prostate cancer is, tell them ask them those two questions. If you had it, do you want to know about it? And do you want you to pick a it, course of treatment? Treat Knowing that one of the treatments, one of the management strategies is actually what, just watching it. Now what's fascinating is you and I have spoken about um, overdiagnosing, but what's really interesting to me is you talk about that being perhaps less of a threat to the patient than overtreatment. Can you talk to me, you've talked to me in the past about different groups when it comes to um, elevated PSA and what you do in terms of treatment. I think that overtreatment is the problem, not overdiagnosis. Overdiagnosis, yes, I think there are people that have biopsies who, in my opinion, shouldn't. Right. But the real problem is what do you do with the biopsy when you get it back? And there is definitely a segment, big segment, of patients that should, in my opinion, have what's called active surveillance. Okay. Meaning you think that this is a cancer that may never harm this patient, especially if they're older. So you institute a program of surveillance. 
Active surveillance is a bet. You're betting that either the disease won't progress, or if it does, you will catch it by this program until it progresses to a state where it's less curable than it is now. And most of the time, you'll be right. So if I'm understanding you correctly, there isn't any obvious benefit to treating some of those patients. In fact, there may be uh, treatment-related harm done. When that's not necessary, you should do active surveillance. Do you think that right now people are getting pushed into the active treatment at a higher rate than they should be? My personal opinion, yes. You have to remember that if you took everyone, every male in this country over the age of 70, and you cut their prostate up in little, little pieces, that the majority of them are going to have some findings of prostate cancer. Which is not going to be the cause of which their is, death. Which is not going to shorten their life by a single day. Now, you're an expert in prostate cancer. You're the chairman of a department of urology or at Penn. The reality, I believe, is that most prostate screening is done in, in uh, the offices of primary care physicians and sometimes allied health professionals. So you don't even do most of the screening. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. Most of the patients that we see with a PSA issue are sent to us by someone who has already gotten the PSA drawn and they judge the PSA to be elevated. So that's the trigger, is a patient undergoing regular screening who has an elevated PSA? Correct. Okay. That's generally what we get in the office. Say, you know, what can I do for you today? I have an elevated PSA my doctor sent me. 